how's it going you awesome bunch of bakers hope you're in a great day so far welcome back to another video today we're making a stuffed deep pan pizza so let's waste no time and get started it was going to be a cold weekend and i wanted something soft bouncy soft and cheesy to warm up my belly and this pizza pie is exactly what the doctor ordered filled with cheese and caramelized onions and topped with more cheese you can of course use any fillings and toppings that you like let's get right to it and let me show you how it's made starting with the ingredients for the dough we'll need some white bread flour yeast salt olive oil and some water pretty simple stuff i'm going to use my lloyd's pans for baking these pizzas and yes pans in plural i'm making two pizzas if you want to make only one then divide the recipe in half alternatively make the whole amount and use a larger tray you can also bake this on a sheet pan it doesn't have to be a deep tin like this okay we'll also need the bowl for mixing scales a dough scraper and a temperature probe and if you're going to make the caramelized onions you also need a pan for cooking them in but that's all we need as i mentioned earlier it was going to be a cold weekend and it's already cold in my kitchen now at only 18 degrees celsius or 64 degrees fahrenheit so i'm going to use some warm water to get my dough started i'm aiming for final dough temperature of around 25 degrees celsius or 77 degrees fahrenheit my water was at 28 degrees or 82 fahrenheit so that should get me there this dough is made out of a simple set of ingredients. It is the amounts of these ingredients that make it special. With a hydration of 80% and an olive oil content of 10%, it is going to be extra airy, light, bubbly, puffy and rich. All good qualities for a hot cheesy pizza pie. And don't worry, we are not going to be folding this an endless number of times. Only two folds will do it for this recipe. Now to start the dough off, in a large bowl, combine the water, yeast and salt. Give it a good mix, dissolve the salt completely before adding the flour and then mixing it to a dough. Because the hydration is so high and the dough is very loose, we are not adding the oil into the dough directly. Instead, we'll fold the oil into the dough. Okay, once the dough is fully mixed, you want to wet your hands with water before you place it in the oily bowl, give the fold up in the air. Let it hang down, then kind of push it back up into itself. I pretty much always give my dough such a fold. It just helps out in the long run. And it does not require any extra effort either. Roll the dough in the oil. And before you put it in the fridge, check the temperature. 25 is what I was after. 25 is what I got. Now let's cover up this blob and pop it in the fridge for 30 minutes of chilling. After 30 minutes, remove the dough from the fridge and give it its first fold. The dough is so loose and stretchy that the coil folding method is the way to go here. Wet your hands with water then pick the dough up by the middle. Release it from the bowl and then roll it underneath itself. Repeat this a few times on all sides. As you can see, it's pretty effective. Even after a few folds, the dough already looks nice and tight. Once you've finished folding, cover the dough up and pop it back into the fridge for another 30 minutes of chilling. And if you are new to all this stuff, you can find videos about cold fermentation and folding and other topics in the Principles of Baking playlist on my channel. Okay, it's been 30 minutes, pulling the dough back out of the fridge and giving it another fold, exactly the same way as previously. After the second fold, the dough is going back into the fridge for yet another 30 minutes, but for good reason this time. We're not going to fold it again, we are going to divide it, shape it up and get it ready for final proofing, because this dough can be baked right from the fridge on the next day. I have this handy tray that I'm going to be using for the dough balls. If you have a deep tray like this, use it. If not, you can just use a regular tray, just oil it up really well. Now this next part is going to be a little bit messy. Drop the oily dough out on the table and then divide it into four equal pieces. I do oil this table regularly, so it's kind of good for me actually. To avoid making an even bigger mess, I'm using a bowl on the scales. After dividing, shape the dough into bowls. And if you're going to use a larger tray than I am, then you only need to divide the dough into two equal pieces, not four. Get once all shaped up, place the dough balls in your greasy tray. Rub a little bit of oil on top of them so they don't stick to the cling film too much. Now they can be covered up and they're ready for the final proof in the fridge. Ideally, you want to leave them in there for around 12 to 24 hours, but it's up to you. You can leave them for longer, you can pull them out sooner. As long as the dough is risen, it's ready for the oven. Okay, on the next day, preheat the oven 250 degrees Celsius, 480 Fahrenheit, fan off. Whilst the oven's preheating, I'm going to make the caramelized onions and leeks. And there's not much to it. All we need is a couple of onions and a leek. Clean them, peel them, slice them nice and thin and they'll be ready for the pot. Properly caramelized onions take a very long time to cook, at least one hour. If we are talking onions for French onion soup, you would need to cook those bad boys for several hours. When it comes to caramelizing onions well, low and slow is the way to go. 
but we don't have that much time. I'll give these half an hour. So grab a pot, add a little bit of olive oil, drop the onions and leeks in and place it on medium heat. And now it's all about patience. Keep cooking them, stirring once in a while until they start browning. If they start sticking to the bottom of the pot, you can add a little splash of water. Just a few drops will do it. Another thing you can do is to season the onions and leeks with some salt. It'll draw out the moisture and also prevent them from sticking to the pot too much. Alternatively, turn the heat down low. Then you won't need to look after them so much. They will take longer to cook, but they'll caramelize better. But for this pizza pie, 30 minutes is more than enough. All I'm saying is that you can use this exact same method to get your onions properly caramelized like for French onion soup. You can also add some garlic to this, perhaps some thyme leaves. It is all up to you. The main thing here is the bread, not the filling. Okay, these onions have cooked for long enough. I'll transfer them to a bowl and leave them on the side. Let's grab our dough out of the fridge and move on to final shaping. This is well fermented. If you have watched the channel for a while, you'll recognize the final shaping of this recipe. A couple of years ago, I did something quite similar called pizza e mortazza. It was a bread baked in a tray just like this, made up of two layers separated by olive oil. After baking, it was taken apart and filled with mortadella. The principle here is the same. Oil up your tray, take one piece of dough, stretch it out to fit the bottom, then top the bottom piece with your filling, which in my case is a caramelized onions, a mix of mozzarella and cheddar, and a sprinkling of parmesan. Then pick up the second piece of dough and then stretch it out up in the air. Use gravity to help you shape it. Let it hang down to get it to the size that you need it to be. Once it's more or less stretched out, lay it over the filling. Try to cover it completely, ideally. And then all there is left to do is to top that second piece of dough with something. I decided to drizzle a little bit more olive oil on it and to top it with even more cheese. Just think about all the delicious fillings and toppings that you could use for your pizza. Or you could go the pizza mortazza way by simply using olive oil in between the dough and then baking it like that and then using the resulting bread for delicious sandwiches. If this baby is ready for the oven, it'll only take about 20 minutes of baking. As soon as it goes in, turn the temperature down to 220 degrees Celsius or 430 Fahrenheit. Bake until it's nicely browned all over. And there you have it, that's how you make a cheesy stuffed pizza pie. Or whatever you want to call it, it doesn't really matter. This thing is seriously good. It is so soft and light, and it goes down so easily. I do have to admit, I demolished this whole thing by myself. I had to skip dinner that night, but it was worth it. So what do you think this method? Have you ever tried stuffing a bread like this before? Let me know down in the comments. If you want to see more videos like this one? Click over here. Subscribe to the channel, click right here. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.